Hello everyone, my name is Jake Montoya and I'm a My Brother's Keeper Peer Advocate with LA County Library. In today's lesson, we are going to be learning about how to draw cartoon characters in motion. By learning how to add motion to our characters in cartoons, we will learn how to bring our drawings to life. With motion, we can start to add actions into our drawings and really start to tell a story. First, let's go over some vocabulary and look at some examples to help us understand more about animating our characters. Line of Action Our line of action, also known as our LOA, is a line that indicates the general direction our character's actions will be moving. Motion Lines Motion lines are additional lines we can add to our drawings to indicate there is some motion happening in that area of the drawing. Squash and Stretch Squash and Stretch is a concept that illustrators use when drawing cartoons performing certain actions. The squash and stretch technique is used to convey anticipation in animation and typically alludes to movement of some kind. Today we'll be working on three motions as examples. Walking, running, and jumping. By getting the basics down, we can start to apply these principles to our own cartoon characters as well. For today's activity, you will need a few sheets of paper, either blank, lined, or even scratch paper is okay, a pencil, and an eraser. The eraser on top of your pencil is okay, but an extra one on the side works as well. When drawing cartoons, we can measure the height of our characters in relation to the size of their heads. Here's a quick little chart I drew to help give you an example. You can also think of this as what fraction of our character's entire body is their head. For a character who is four heads tall, their head is one fourth of their overall height. For our character who is only two heads tall, their head is one half of their overall height. This rule of thumb can also help us when we are deciding what kind of character we are drawing. The taller the character and the smaller their head in relation to their body, the more grown up our characters look. The smaller their body and the bigger their head, the younger and cuter our characters will start to look. To make our characters for this lesson a little easier to draw, I decided to make them two heads tall. This will help us when placing our character's head on our line of action by knowing that our character's head is going to take up half of our line. We can start by using just one line, our line of action, to indicate the direction or flow of our character's action. Let's start with drawing our character taking a relaxing walk and draw one line coming down and outward, forward, just like so. Now, we know our character is two heads tall, which means our character's head is half of our drawing. So we can go ahead and draw a circle on our line to indicate where our head is going to be. And we know that the circle will be big enough to take up half of our line. We can now draw our character's body below their head. We do not have to draw our character's body aligned with the line of action exactly. Our LOA is just to help guide the overall direction of our character's action. Now we can draw on our character's legs that is taking the forward stride. Use the LOA to help guide the direction of their leg, but you do not need to draw their leg aligned perfectly with the LOA. Now you can add the leg that is taking the backward stride. This leg can be a little bit tricky because it is going against the direction of the LOA. So how do we know where to guide it? We can use the other natural curves of our drawing to help direct this leg as well and follow the line of his body to round out the line of his leg like so. The front leg, the leg closest to us, will always be overlapping the other leg somehow if our character is turned at all. So it is okay for this leg to extend over the leg that is taking the forward stride. For this last step to this motion, we can add our character's arms. Arms and legs on the same side of the body work oppositely. So if you're walking or running and your right leg is moving forward, then your right arm would be moving backward. You can start at where our character's shoulder would be, where their head and their body meet, and draw their arm like so using the LOA as a guide for the motion of their arm. Since their back leg is the one moving forward, their back arm is going backwards, so we can't really see it. To indicate that our character's back arm is still there swinging backward, I like to draw the tip of it just behind his back peeking out. When you're done sketching your characters, you can go back with your pencil and start to darken their lines a little bit. 
to help you differentiate between their limbs as well, you can also go back and shade in the far side limbs, just like so. Let me show you very quickly how we can make this pose into an action sequence by drawing the same LOA but going the opposite direction. If I were to draw the same kind of line of action, just going backwards instead of going forward, we can draw our character taking the next step in this sequence, with their front leg taking the forward stride and their back leg leaving the last stride they just took. This is how artists can start to fully animate cartoons. We can now use our line of action to illustrate our leg taking our backward stride. We can also use the natural curve of our character's back to draw our leg taking the forward stride. Notice how in this next pose, our legs are switching directions and our leg that was stepping forward is now stepping backward and our leg that was stepping backward is now stepping forward. This will also be the case for our character's arms. Their arm that was swinging forward is now swinging backward, and their arm that was swinging backward is now swinging forward. Now you can go back with your pencil and darken in the lines over this character, and shade in their far side limbs as well to help you differentiate. Once you shade in their limbs, you can see a lot more clearly the difference of them taking their two different steps. Congrats! Now we have our character's basic walking motion down. For our next running motion, we want to draw a line of action a little more active. Let's say our character is running away from something that's chasing them. Our line of action might look something like this. It is curved and bending like this to illustrate that our character is moving so fast, the air or wind in our drawing is blowing them back and bending them backwards. Next, we can place our character's head again at the halfway mark on our line of action. Now we can measure out our character's body right under their head. Next, we can use our line of action to also draw our forward striding leg, just like so. Again, we do not have to draw our character's body perfectly aligned with our line of action, but we can use the line of action to help guide the motion of our character's body. After that, we can draw our backward striding leg using our character's body curves and our opposite leg motion as well. The key to remember here is that our character's motions should be natural and fluid. The best way to do this is to use our existing motions and our line of action to help guide every motion of our character so that it is all connected. To draw our character's arms, we can use our line of action again to help guide their upward motion like our character is running hysterically, arms flailing. We can only really see their front arm because their back arm is mostly hidden behind their head. Once you are done sketching your character's arms and legs, you can go ahead and go back with your pencil and darken the lines as well as shade in their far side limbs, just like so. You can use the same line of action to create the next step in this action sequence by just switching which leg is coming forward, like so. To draw the next step in our character's running sequence, we can replicate almost every step that we took before except this time we're just switching which leg is taking the forward stride and which leg is taking the backward stride. Congratulations, we now have our character's running sequence down. To indicate that our character is running, I also added some motion lines to illustrate just how fast our character is running. Our next motion, the jumping motion, is a little trickier than the other two because it requires a couple new animation terms, anticipation and squash and stretch. The jumping motion is made up of a couple poses. Our squash pose is made to anticipate our stretch pose. What this means is that by drawing our character in a squash pose, positioned like they are crouching down, we are drawing them building up the energy to jump and this pose anticipates that a jump is bound to follow. For our squash pose, our line of action is going to look a little different and will actually be a semi-squash circle, more like an oval. Within this circle, we can draw our character's head also squashed, kind of looking like an oval as well. Keep in mind we should still be following our proportions for our character with their head being half their height and body and legs each being a quarter. Now for our character's body, 
we can draw it almost teardrop shaped, getting wider at the belly for leaning over. For our character's legs, we can use the shape of our oval line of action to influence their shape as well. We can draw an arc under their legs to signify our character as bending both of their legs, squatting to generate the energy necessary to jump, and finishing our legs connecting to the outside of our character's belly. This placement of the leg is meant to illustrate that our character is bent over in a squash position. For our character's arms, we can draw them like our character is bending them, tucking them in as well. We can loosely follow the lines for our legs to help illustrate their arms. Their arms will also be partially hidden by their head in this squashed position from being bent over. We now have pose one of our squash and stretch animation to show our character jumping. For our next pose, we are going to draw what it looks like when our character goes from the squash position and jumps into the stretch position. For this motion, you can even do two LOAs reaching upward into a peak so that it almost kind of looks like a triangle. Drawing these lines as wider at the base and ending in a peak is to help guide our character's motion and emphasize that all of our character's energy is moving upward. Because this is now our stretch pose, when we draw our character's head, we can draw a little more stretched out than we normally do and make it a little oval shaped height wise as opposed to making it oval shaped lengthwise the way we did with our squash pose. Next, go ahead and draw our character's body under their head. You can stretch out the character's body a little bit more here. For this next step, drawing our character's legs, we can draw them coming just the slightest bit outward, following our line of actions that kind of looked like a triangle earlier. By doing this, we help emphasize our character's motion is moving upward and tapering at the top. We can use a similar method when drawing their arms because they are jumping and the energy is coming up. That means everything else is being pushed down like their shoulders. Their arms should be stemming from their body or their neck area and can flare just a little bit outward like so to reinforce that their energy is moving up. Awesome, we now have the basic motion of our squash and stretch pose down. The squash and stretch concept in animation is important because one position anticipates the other. This means that for them to work best, they have to be used together. Congrats, you've now learned the basics of how to animate walking, running, and jumping movements in cartoons. There are tons of motions and actions we can draw our characters performing and with each new pose and possibility comes new perspectives we have to draw and new challenges to our characters. I hope you enjoyed this video in our draw along series and I hope you are able to take these methods and apply them to your own drawings and characters. Don't forget to check out our spring and summer discovery program. This program will be running from now through August 8th and it is open for anyone to join. Upon entry, there will be new challenges each month that when completed will put you in the running to win awesome prizes. You can sign up online at lacountylibrary.org forward slash spring dash summer dash discovery or stop by your local sidewalk service library to pick up a game card and activity ideas. Thank you again and please feel free to click the link in the description box for upcoming programs. And don't forget to subscribe to our channel for easy access to new videos. See you next time.